guys welcome back to another video so in today's video I'm going to be filming a what it took to become a NICU CNA so I had my first video suggestion um, in the comments on my first video that I filmed so if you haven't seen that yet go back and watch that video and then come watch this video the first thing I did to become a NICU CNA is a dream job has always been to be in the NICU and at first I thought it was for nursing so I went to school to be an RN so I was currently attending a college about an hour away to become an RN and then when I found this out the semester was ending so I decided to go ahead and get my um, CNA and then try to get on the NICU. I've always known that I do not want to work with elderly people and that's because I don't want to make this sound bad or anything but I get how can I say this like babies they so yeah while the mom's pregnant for nine months she becomes connected to this kid and a baby passing away is so 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 hard it really is but when a adult passes away for some reason I feel like I would have more connection with them because I would be able to talk with most of them will be able to talk to you and you would get so used to like helping them do their daily stuff that I honestly feel like I would be too attached to them so when they pass away it would affect me deeply and also when you're with elderly people or adults when they are passing away you're more involved as in the NICU we don't have to do the CPR we don't have to we're not on the code team so the NICU has their own code team so when a baby um, codes then the nurses rush in there and the doctors and stuff and we just stand back and if they need us we can go run for um, supplies but we are not like directly involved in um, the CPR um, so that's a, like one of the big things is the death part is why I don't want to deal with adults or elderly people um, but anyway so I went and got my CNA at a local technolo technology school is that what it's called? technological technological mm, no Anyway, it was a technology school, and they offered a CNA, CNA um, course, and it was only a month long. So, it wasn't, I think it was maybe $1,500, but I got financial aid, and they paid for it. So, all I had to pay out of pocket for was my books, and that wasn't too expensive. And then you have to wear all white, so I had to buy uniforms, which honestly, you can go to a thrift store or Goodwill and buy uniforms. In pretty decent shape and then I got lucky and there was a store going out of business um, locally and they had nurse nurse shoes the nursing well I guess so they had the nursing shoes that I needed and they were white and they were on clearance because they were closing so I got two pairs of those so it really didn't cost me a lot to go the class was Monday through Friday and it was 8 to 3 and you had to attend so since it was such a short class, you had to be sure to attend almost every class. If you missed a certain amount of hours, you had to retake the whole entire class over again because you learned so much every single day. Um, so I attended this class with my grandmother, my sister's fiance, and of course I myself. And the class was only about 12 people. Um, and so we did book work. That's what the first like half of the class was. We did... Um, book work and we took the written test but not like the written state test just written test for our um sorry I'm shitting for our instructor and then the next half of it we did skills so skills is when I think I have some pictures and if I can find them I will insert them but if I can't find those pictures I'm going to explain it whether I can find those pictures or not um, so you walk into a room and it's a bunch of fake hospital rooms set up. So ours had, I think six, three on this side and three on this side. And they had privacy curtains, they had bedside tables, they had hospital beds, and they had the mannequins. So we had to learn all of our skills on these mannequins. There was one mannequin and like they're, they can make noises. They can, there's one that was a pregnant one and for um, LPNs, I think that they actually like was giving birth and so they can do a lot of cool things they're 
probably really expensive, but it helps a lot with the scales. So we did that for the second half, and this is crazy, but unfortunately during this half, I had bought this 15 foot long charger. I mean, I was taking a shower one day, and I, I do not advise this, but I had the um, charger on the sink in my bathroom, and my phone was plugged up. So after I got out of the bath, I unplugged the charger, and I went to take it to my bedroom, and I tripped over it, and I tore my Achilles. Partially, though. I didn't have to have surgery or anything, but I partially tore my Achilles. I will insert pictures of my um, cast now. Um, but yeah, so during the skill saying it was super hard for me to get around. I feel like it would have been easier, obviously, if I didn't have this huge boot and cast on, but it was really hard to maneuver around because it's not a giant room with six bed, like hospital mini room set up. It's, it's like a, it's a medium sized room. So trying to get around each bed and push the wheelchairs up and complete all my skills was semi difficult with my boot on but anyway I just thought that was funny I want to tell you guys the skills part we just had to learn like peri care we had to learn catheter care we had to learn how to ambu um, ambulate a patient with a gait belt how to ambulate a patient in a um, with the gait belt to the wheelchair with a walker how to get him in bed how to dress the patient how to um, do mouth care nail care we had to learn how to feed a patient, which was, I mean, that's not very hard. Bed baths. The hardest thing for me was, was learning how to do uh, manual blood pressure. So they have this fake arm. It's not attached to a um, body or anything. It's just a fake arm and it like stimulates a pulse. So the reason the blood pressure thing was really hard for me is I did not have a really good stethoscope. So I went to like, there's a medical store around here and I just got like a cheap one it was a name brand and it came with the blood pressure cuff in it because that's another thing you do have to supply your own um, blood pressure cuff and stethoscope um anyway so I there's a freaking spider look at this hold up y'all see that I don't know if y'all can see it I was super nervous like crawling um so there was this fake arm and it wasn't attached to a dummy or anything but it was like the same material as the dummies and we had to take the blood pressure on it so the instructor has a stethoscope though that she uses during the blood pressure test and it um has two stethoscope like ear pieces so she got to listen as we got to listen so she was taking the blood pressure as we were taking the blood pressure so she knew if we were right or wrong and how far we were off and you could only be like four off on the diastolic and four off on the systolic. Um, why does that sound so wrong? Diastolic and systolic. Systolic. I promise I know what I'm talking about, but for some reason right now, it does not sound right. Um, so that was really difficult for me. For one, because I really just didn't think that the stethoscope was good that I was using. Because when I used the Lippmann stethoscope, it works very well and I can hear everything. Easiest skill for me to learn obviously was probably like gowning up. Putting your gloves on, putting your mask on and taking it back off. That's a really easy skill. Um, another easy skill I would say washing your hands. That's easy and everyone gets that on their state test. So anyway let me just finish saying so that's just some of the skills. So ambulation with a gait belt, ambulation with um, the walker, um, changing linens, peri care, catheter care, mouth care, nail care, hair care, bed baths, gowning up and down, input, output. Did I say gowning up and down? Gowning on and off, input, output, blood pressure. That's pretty much all the skills and so in the NICU the only skills that you will use is so for blood pressure we do automatic blood pressures in my NICU I don't know about the NICU that um, is near you guys but we do automatic blood pressures ow what ow, 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 ow. that hurt we do automatic blood pressures um, you will have to know 
how to count respirations, how to um, get a pulse, how to do temperatures, which that's pretty easy, how to change a diaper, which I guess that is a skill to like peri carry that we could kind of relate to the NICU in a way. And going back to knowing how much they intake, the bottles always say, like they say how many cc's on the bottle, so you'll never have to guesstimate on that really either. Um, wait, knowing how much they output, there's diaper scales in the room, so if they need a diaper weight, you put a dry diaper on there, zero at the scale, make sure it's the same exact diaper though, and it is dry, put it on there, zero at the scale, and then you'll take like a wet diaper or um, a diaper with a stool in it and put it on a scale and then that's how much that weighs so that's not very hard you don't ambulate a baby with a gait belt you don't ambulate a baby with a walker not in the NICU we do get floated sometimes when our census is really low but the um, med floors are really high we will get floated to work with the pediatrics um, and on that floor sometimes you do do manual blood pressures sometimes um, you do like have to ambulate patients into a wheelchair ambulate patients with a walker and do more stuff like that so even if you are looking into working with kids and not necessarily the NICU all these skills are a necessity to become a CNA um so we did that we went through the course I passed all those classes we had to do clinicals for the last for some reason I'm feeling like it's the last two weeks or maybe it was a week, I don't know, for one week straight I think we did clinicals at a local nursing home and my Achilles was still tore. So I was in a cast as I said and then my instructor informed me that if I was in a cast I could not complete the course and I was going to have to pay for it all over and redo the whole entire course. So I went to the orthopedic and I said can I please get this cast off and just get a boot. I'm this close to um, finishing um, my CNA course and I really really want to finish it now and I'll have to go back. So they were gracious enough to let me get the cast off and one of my friends gave me, let me borrow a boot to use until my Achilles was healed. Thank you so much. Um, so anyway, I, at clinicals, since I was in a boot, I changed a few beds. I wasn't assigned to baths because I couldn't get my boot wet. And eventually they were just like, we need someone to work in the nail salon. So in this nursing home facility, they had an actual nail care nail care nail care area in a hair care area and they have I think they said I had they have a cosmetologist come in like once a month to do hair and they need someone to do nails this day so I got to do all the patients nails it was so sweet um, I fell in love with them like I said like I fall in love with them really easy and that's why I don't think I'd be able to work with them I fall in love with babies but I don't know for some reason it's different to me it might not be to someone else but it's just different to me um, so I did nail care, I filed their nails, I painted them any color, and it was so cute because some of them would be like, I want pink, and you would start painting, they're like, I didn't pick that color, and, it, and it's really like, some of them are in the mindset of a child, so in a way it is like working with child, childs, because childs is a word, working with children's, children's, <laughs> working with children, still, they're just adults with children mindsets. Um, so after clinicals were done, we had to schedule our state test day. I was fortunate enough to get a test date at the facility I had my class at, so I was familiar with my surroundings, I was familiar with the mannequins I would be using, I was familiar with the um, testing center that I would be going to. Um, the first, but I was with a group of people that I did not have in my CNA class. Like, you get divided in two groups, so one group will do their skills first and then the other group will do the written, and then you guys will switch out. So I had to do my written first, and I was with five people from a different school. And I did my written one, and I think I was one of the last ones done. And I finished it, and then we had to go wait in the hallway to go into the skills testing center. It was very, very, very nerve-wracking. Um, and they call you in one by one, and then you just do your skills. I'm going to try to remember what all skills I had to do. I know I had to do hand washing because everyone does. I think I had to do two ambulations. Yeah, two ambulatory exercises. And then I had to do one, what's it called, where you do like 
we're going to take your right arm and lift it out. Does that cause any pain? Does that cause any pain? So you have to do that to each area, each limb of their body. Um, so I had that one. And I'm pretty sure that's... I think you get five. I cannot remember. It was three years ago. But I passed my first time. Thank the Lord. And I became a CNA. So before I got certified, I filled out applications at several facilities. I applied at a pediatric home health facility. I applied at a... Um, I feel like I applied at another local hospital. And then I applied for like six positions at the local children's hospital here. Eventually, I filled out so many applications that the website actually told me, sorry, you have reached your max. You cannot fill out any more applications. So, it was a waiting game. And our class ended in August, but I did not get to take my test until September. And I got my interview before I even found out if I passed my CNA. So, I had an interview for a multidisciplinary clinic, working Monday through Friday, 8 to 5, no holidays, no snow days, no nothing. And if there's no patients, they get work that day. Um, and then, th then I had an interview with the NICU. And like I said, the NICU always been my dream job, and that's the reason I went and got my CNA. So of course I went with the NICU. And also another reason is the hours were great for the clinic. They really were. But I have an autoimmune deficiency, so working with other kids that have illnesses or autoimmune, like I just feel like that would not have been good for me. And I know that in the NICU there was nothing that like flu or stress, there was nothing like that in the NICU. Um, so I took the job in the NICU. It was not very easy. They were they were telling me they got like hundreds of applications a month for the posi positions that I applied for. And thank the Lord they chose me. And I started in October because I had to do a hospital orientation and then I did the unit orientation. And I love it. Um, I would not, I would not go back and change get my CNA I would not go back and change the fact that I chose the NICU the NICU is where I want it to be and that's where I am and I'm super blessed to have this job so that's really how I became a NICU CNA a lot of NICUs do not hire CNAs like I said I was very uneducated on our NICU and I did not know that they hired CNAs but they did so it might be hard to find a NICU that hires CNAs it's honestly though I think it's amazing for the unit. If it's a growing unit or if it's a unit that has a lot of babies, and don't get me wrong, if they have a lot of critical babies, it's really hard for a, a CNA to do anything besides help the nurse out when they need help or stock the rooms. But if they have a lot of feeder growers, which are babies that are just waiting to gain weight to go home or learning to eat and then go home, or if they have a lot of NAS babies with their neonatal abstinence syndrome, which is a drug addicted baby, you can help with those a ton. You can cuddle those babies, you can feed those babies, you can change their diaper, you can bathe those babies. So, I mean, they're, like I said, if they, they don't have a lot of critical babies, having a NICU CNA is awesome. And then even if they feel like at least one CNA would benefit their unit by just stalking or helping the nurse whenever they can, that'd be awesome too. But anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I hope it answered some of your questions. If you have any more questions about being a CNA or working in the NICU, you can just um, comment those down below and I will answer those in, a ne in the next video. But until next time guys, hasta luego.